So thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here today on behalf of Ulster Business School to um, present my research, which is all about exploring consumers' quality perceptions of Northern Ireland uh, food and drink produce. Okay, so to first give you all a bit of background to my research to set the scene before discussing my findings. The words in purple are some of the current issues facing the agri-food industry, and the words in blue are some of the consumer demands as a result of these issues. But despite all of these conflicting factors, these issues have highlighted new opportunities for local produce to be promoted through marketing their unique quality credentials, as outlined in the policy briefing, through the use of extrinsic quality cues on product packaging. But the question is, what is the best method of doing this? So at the centre of all these concerns lies the focus of the research, which is discovering a way to use quality to market local produce. And here we have some examples of extrinsic quality cues, um, such as the various quality assurance logos at the top, like the PGI status, which a number of our local products have already been awarded with. We have price, date labels, brand names, uh, method of production and country of origin information. So local produce is an integral part of the Northern Ireland economy. As you can see, there are many opportunities to grow and promote our local produce, yet there are also many barriers which need to be overcome. There is a need to raise the profile of local products and engage the consumer. And again, this research suggests that um, this can be achieved by emphasising their unique quality credentials. And this last point is of particular interest in my research. When I spoke about this almost two years ago, the Assembly had just made a call for action on this issue. Then, of course, last summer, it was announced that a unified marketing body will be established for the, the sole promotion of pro promoting Northern Ireland food and drink. So this is very exciting news in terms of my own research, and I'm eager to see how this new marketing de body develops over the coming years. And I hope this research will be of particular interest to, dis to the strategy board to help inform the development of this unified marketing strategy for Northern Ireland produce. So with all that in mind, the overall aim was to explore consumer perceptions of the marketing of these quality cues in regard to local produce. I'm moving on then to how I did this with my methods and some key findings. So a brief scoping exercise was conducted initially to discover any of these extrinsic cues not identified during the literature. Um, I conducted eight store visits across a variety of retailers and three industry interviews. I discovered a lot of interesting information from this exercise, but in terms of progressing the research, the main outcome was that current and upcoming food trends and opportunities were highlighted, such as the popularity, the growth in popularity of the craft beer sector and the lingering distrust of the meat sector. This then provided me with the rationale of the products that I then examined within the focus groups. So focus groups were then conducted to determine consumer perceptions towards these quality cues used on local produce. Eight focus groups containing 40 participants were conducted and each group explored key areas such as purchasing behaviour and perceptions of local produce. And the outcome of the focus groups was to again narrow the focus of these extrinsic quality cues to be analysed in a further experiment. So what were the key findings of these focus groups? Well, there were many, so I just want to focus on discussing the ones that are most relevant for today. So the first predominant theme was all about seeing is believing. So this theme relates to the visual appeal of packaging design. Results revealed how the transparency, colour and the condition of packaging had a substantial influence on consumer quality perceptions. The most interesting finding that was raised time and time again, which I never came across in the literature, is that consumers really value transparent packaging and being able to see the physical product itself so participants stated that they really like clear packaging because they feel that the producer has nothing to hide. And this creates a greater sense of trust in what you're buying. You can assess the quality of the product by yourself, for example, by looking at the colour of the meat. And it really lets the product speak for itself. And the second theme then was it's all in the name. So this theme related to the reputation of the brand and the retailer. 
So results again indicated that trust, knowledge and previous experience with the brand shaped participants' quality perceptions. The key finding here was the power that a reputable brand name can have over consumers in ensuring repeat purchases. So for instance, the name Hovis was associated with quality as it's a leading, well-established bakery brand, which participants were very familiar with. And long-standing local brands such as Cookstown were also considered nostalgic and the familiarity of those brands often encouraged repeat purchases. So the third theme was food origins and the rise of the food patriot. So as outlined within the briefing, um, consumers are increasingly interested in provenance and all things local, and this has led to an increase in food patriots. So these are consumers who believe that local food um, is of superior quality to other countries, for example, because it's fresher, healthier, it tastes better, it's less mass produced, and therefore it's more authentic. So this theme focused on how the provenance of a product might affect consumer decisions. Results demonstrated that knowing the origin and the traceability of ingredients was often associated with good quality. The findings also highlighted that participants believed that local produce was of superior quality, for example, as, as a result of flavour, freshness, and there was less shrinkage in local products. Providing further evidence that really emphasising the quality and provenance of Northern Ireland produce could be used as a unique selling point for local producers. And a further theme was content is king. So this theme related to the influence of ingredient and nutritional information. Results suggested that trust in the authenticity, freshness and healthiness of the product was a major concern. The most interesting finding here was that participants associated products with a very short list of recognisable ingredients as opposed to a long list of additives and preservatives with higher quality, as they thought this made the product healthier and fresher. And likewise, participants also associated meat products, which had a very high percentage of meat with little to no bulking agents with higher quality, removing any doubt of adulteration. And the final theme was all about tantalising the taste buds. So this theme related to key product descriptors such as homemade and outdoor bread. Results revealed how taste expectation was important for participants. Extrinsic cues such as the flavour descriptions promoted the quality of the ingredients within, creating taste expectations in the minds of participants, compelling them to actually try the product. So for instance, the wording smoked chilli and goat's cheese really created a heightened flavour and quality expectation for many participants. So as you can see, the focus groups were very useful in identifying what consumers said were the most important extrinsic cues which influenced them while they're shopping. And these findings indicate that by listening to consumers and including these very simple elements on product packaging, local could be more effectively promoted on the shelf raising the profile of Northern Ireland produce and ultimately has the potential to lead to an increase in purchases. So it was decided that these key findings should be investigated further and measured in an experimental study which used an eye tracking device to investigate the effectiveness of these key ex extrinsic quality cues on local products. And the outcome of the experiment was to triangulate all of the previous data and to provide a more holistic and effective method of analy analysing the effectiveness of these cues. So data analysis of the experiment is currently ongoing as I very recently finished running these experiments. So I'll briefly outline two of the prime examples of how these cues were actually measured on local produce. Okay. So hulls of balamina, pork sausages, was examined as a mainstream local product. As defined within the appendix of the briefing, the following extrinsic cues were measured during the experiment. So we have brand name, provenance, the appearance of the physical product itself, the meat content, date labels, and nutritional information. So as we can see here from the graph, nutritional information was fixated upon for the longest time, specifically the RDI information outlining fat content, salt content, followed then by brand name and the appearance of the sausages themselves. And here we can see a heat map 
which tells us the same information as the graph, but shows how the technology can be used to demonstrate data in very useful and different ways. Red reflecting the hotspots, ranging then from yellow to green and blue, where the least time was spent. Again, we can see RDI information was fixated upon the longest due to the very intense large red area. So what do these results mean? Why um, did nutritional information and brand name receive so much more attention? Well, comments during playback interviews after each experiment suggested that nutritional information was an important cue for two reasons. Firstly, due to concern regarding how healthy the product was. For example, did it, did it have high fat, sugar or salt content? Suggesting that healthier products are associated with better quality. Secondly, this information was important as the, a, a result of trust. So are you getting what you're being sold? For this reason, a number of participants went on to look at the meat content of the sausages, with a higher percentage again being associated with better quality, and also the appearance of the actual sausages in the packet. So participants stated that they quickly examined the sausages themselves to assess quality by looking to see if they could tell how much fat was in them, and if they looked like a nice meaty sausage. So these findings show that mistrust definitely still lingers about the supply chain and authenticity, demonstrating the importance of having this information on packaging to inform and reassure the consumer, giving us the edge over competition if our produce has this information prominently displayed. So brand name was also important as a result of familiarity and experience. Comments indicated that participants tend to purchase brands and products they've tried and tested, as opposed to risk buying an item that they've never heard of. From the quotes, we could see this could have both a positive and a negative effect on quality perceptions. One participant fixated on the brand name because they'd never heard of it before, which led them to question, well, why have I never heard of them? They mustn't be any good. And in contrast, another participant fixated on the brand because they were highly familiar with it, and it told them everything they needed to know about the product, demonstrating the power the brand name can have, even if the packaging is poor. So Hilden Beer was another local product examined during the experiment, and the following cues were measured. So we have brand name, provenance, imagery, and these key product descriptors. So as we can see, the descriptor Barney's Brew was the extrinsic cue that received the most visual attention, very closely followed by brand name, the image of Barney himself, and the product description below stating that the brew was a Belfast BAP wheat beer. And here again we see a heat map which demonstrates that Barney's Brew was fixated upon the most due to the large red area. And then here we have a focus map, telling us the same information as the heat map, but a further demonstration of how the technology can be used to present the data in different ways. The idea is that only the areas participants were actually interested in are rendered in the image, while everything they ignored has been excluded. So it's a very nice way of seeing what is actually important by only rendering these spotlights of interest. What do these results mean? Well, Barney's Brew and brand name were clearly the two most prominent cues. The words Barney's Brew was strongly linked to the image of Barney above, and together they created a nice story on the packaging to entice consumers in. Consumers' um, comments suggested participants fixated on this due to the sense of intrigue these words created, and participants were interested to know more about Barney, spending more time actually um, searching and analysing the product. Participants stated that they are often reading, interested in reading personalised information like this on product packaging, such as the company history, which provides more information on the provenance of the product. And brand name was important, again, as a result of familiarity and experience. Participants fixated on this cue when attempting to establish whether they knew the brand or not. As you can see from the quotes, many participants were aware that Hilden is a local company, which immediately increased their quality perceptions of the product. Participants stated that they would be willing to buy this product and give it a go just because it was local, even those who indicated that they were not attracted by the packaging design. Again, highlighting this idea of the food patriot, 
that knowing the product is local can be enough to sell it. Demonstrating how the localness of a product really should be prominently displayed to encourage these purchases. So while these two examples are an extremely limited overview of their experimental results, they've hopefully shown you the impact these extrinsic quality cues can have on local packaging. And it's anticipated that once completed, the experimental results will assist in creating um, a more comprehensive framework of these extrinsic quality cues, which can be used by local producers for the promotion of quality in their produce. So what does this all mean in terms of policy? Well, we all know that at the moment there's a lot going on for Northern Ireland food and drink. And likewise, in recent years, there's been a lot of great policies to support the growth of our agri-food sector, in particular, the going for growth strategy and the executive's economic and innovation strategies, which are all about creating innovative, value-added products, establishing a consumer-focused industry, and marketing local produce to become export-led. So I believe this research feeds into these policies and could be used to help inform future developments, particularly with reference to establishing a consumer-focused industry on the marketing side. And as I mentioned earlier, I also hope that this research will be of particular interest and assistance to the development of the new food marketing body. So what are the key policy recommendations that have come from this research? We need to be unified, we need to be consumer-focused, and we need to invest in marketing. So we need to create one method of promoting Northern Ireland food and drink, for example, like the Board Bay Equality Mark or the Scotland Food and Drink Model. There is a lot of consumer confusion regarding labels and schemes, as there's just so many out there. So we need to come together and create one and do that one well, increasing awareness and understanding, making it simple and easy to identify quality Northern Ireland produce on the shelf. We must better understand the local shopper in order to tailor these marketing strategies to more effectively promote the quality of local produce. And we need to make the most of the current spotlight by investing in marketing, by either increasing spend or more effectively managing the current budget. And encouragingly, a lot has been invested into the year of food so far, so we need to keep up this level of commitment. And we also need to adopt and invest in innovative and exciting techniques and technologies to gather this data, such as the eye tracking technology. And most importantly, to share this knowledge with small businesses in Northern Ireland to help them grow, creating a more sustainable economy, fulfilling then, at least in part, key priorities outlined in the Going for Growth strategy and the Executive's Programme for Government but also very relevant to the idea of creating these agri-food competency centres across Northern Ireland to share this information and nurture innovation and research and development in Northern Ireland, again, as outlined within the executive's innovation strategy. So in conclusion, it's clear that it is our year to shine with the launch of the Northern Ireland Year Food and Drink and the ever-increasing interest in all things local and artisan. We must make the most of this opportunity to demonstrate that the quality of our produce can compete with the best of them. So this research provides evidence that this can be achieved, at least in part, by using packaging design to promote quality and provenance. But how can we do this? Well, the two most important lessons that can be learned from this research is that the consumer is key. Understanding consumer perceptions of quality is fundamental to the success of the agri-food industry. It's imperative that producers effectively interpret consumer quality expectations and incorporate this into their product. As simply put, a product will not sell if it does not satisfy the needs and the demands of the consumer. And also the power of packaging. As packaging has the potential to entice consumers to try products they have never experienced before. During a typical shop, the average consumer encounters around 300 brands every minute Therefore, we must learn to promote Northern Ireland produce more effectively on the shelves or risk being overlooked. We must make them more accessible and visible to close the gap between consumers saying they will support local and actively buying local. Well, thank you very much for your time today and I really hope this presentation has been both useful and informative.